guys, it's Jessica from Peace Love Books, and today I'm here with my mid-month wrap-up for September. I say it every mid-month wrap-up, but I cannot believe we're already halfway through the month, but I have 17 books to share with you. Most of them are audiobooks. I had a couple reading vlogs go up that I was really excited for, so I will go ahead and get to the 17 books that I've read so far in the first 15 days of September. So the first reading vlog that I did this month was reading Mary's from More to Mary's Favorite Romances. So the first book I read was Hush Hush by Luc Lucia Franco, as I think I pronounced her first name and I listened to this book on audio. It is pretty chunky so it was a pretty long audiobook and it is about a girl who decides to be an escort for money and I gave this three stars. It's a pretty uh, forbidden taboo romance. She has a relationship with a man who's like 20 years older than her and she decides to be an escort because she's in college and she's being raised by her grandmother. She needs money and her best friend is an escort and gets her kind of into the business and it's a high-end escort kind of thing. If you want my full thoughts check out that vlog. I was kind of annoyed because there is cheating on both parts in here and I felt like it was completely unnecessary on the heroine to cheat because she didn't even like her boyfriend and I was just like why are you even dating this guy and so that was a little annoying and the uh, hero how he judged her felt very hypocritical at the end so I had just a few issues with this so I ended up giving this one three out of five stars. I feel like this month didn't start off on the best foot because then I read Uncharted by Adriana Anders and I loved White Out which was the first book which is in Antarctica. This one is an Alaskan survival romance and I think it's focus too much on the survival where I didn't care about the romance. Our heroine is uh, trying to track down this guy because there's this deadly virus that someone has and the bad guys are trying to get and so she's trying to track down this guy in the middle of the Alaskan wilderness who apparently has this virus and she finds him and he's got a dog which I loved and then the bad guys are like hot on their tail so they gotta run away together and they're like trudging through the Alaskan wilderness like about to die in this cold tundra kind of thing and the romance was definitely taking the backseat to the all the suspense going on but the suspense was just the same thing they were just walking and walking and walking and I don't remember the first book being like that and it might have been but I just was bored in this book and then I felt like it was super insta love and didn't really like they would mention like oh they're kind of attractive in the beginning and then all of a sudden they were like all over each other and I was like where did this come from so I gave this one three out of five stars I wasn't really impressed I'm really really sad because I love like cold romantic suspense books and this was not it so if you have any better ones like give me a Mount Everest romance that's what I want I've already read one but I need more and I don't know if they're out there or like a mountain climbing romance or an Antarctica survival romance I need those and this just unfortunately wasn't for me then I read The Truth About Heartbreak by B. Celeste for that video that I did reading Mary's favorites and I give this one four stars this one our heroine is adopted when she's 13 and she has a really abusive bad past and she falls for her her adopted brother's best friend who pretty much was supposed to be treating her like a sister but like she always really liked him but she was 13 and he was like 16 I think and so it nothing could happen because like she was too young for him and she kind of always idolized him but then we flash forward like 10 years and see them he might have been older he might have been like 18 I don't remember but we flash forward more now and when she is in her 20s and he is also I think in his late 20s and it's their romance there is cheating in here which I didn't mind too much and we did have a jealous significant other in here which I don't really love either but I also didn't mind it because I understood where she was coming from but I understood what he was trying to hold on to and I really enjoyed it I think it was really great I do think it was a little weird pacing wise at the end when she went off to do something and he was just like kind of sitting around but I love romances that span a long time give me that angst I love it when it like starts when they're young but the past wasn't too long it was like 25% was when they were teenagers and then we fast forwarded which I don't mind at all I like that I don't like if it's like split down the middle I want not as much in the past and most in the present which this did so four to five stars for this one the next one I read I don't even remember what I gave it but it's Cruel Obsession by J.L. Beck and C. Haleman and this one he is obsessed with her and to the point where he like protects her but he's also like stalking her all right I've got it I didn't even put this on good that I read it. It was a very short audiobook. I'm, I'm not going to continue the series, so I'm assuming I gave her three stars when I read it, but she, he is obsessed with her, and he stalks her and, like, has cameras around her house and will make any guy who dates her or plan on dates her, like, disappear. He's, like, literally that obsessed with her, and she doesn't get why guys don't like her, and she's like, any guy who wants to date me, they stand me up or they cancel, and she doesn't know why. But he also, like, saved her from being attacked, like, one night. He's just, like, obsessed with her. And so then he... 
Leah finds out that there's a hit put out on her and he decides to kidnap her himself and then they fall in love and I thought it was fine I mean it was really short I think it was a five or six hour audiobook so I didn't really care of finishing the series I mean, it might be a duet and I don't think my library has the second audiobook I might have read it if my library had it but they don't and I don't feel like just picking this up so three out of five stars it wasn't bad but I think it was obvious what their connection was from the moment something was mentioned I was like well duh that's how like why he's obsessed with her and so nothing was really like shocking or surprising but if you want like a stalker or romance you might pick this up then I read Beauty and the Blacksmith by Tessa Dare this is a novella in the Spindle Cove series and our heroine is of like noble birth I don't remember what her family title is but she's in love with a town blacksmith and so she'll actually like break her jewelry on purpose just to go see him so if you like a social class difference romance you have to read this one it was so sweet and I really liked how she was just like really really into him and he really liked her too but he was like you need to do better than me but I enjoyed it and she didn't know if she could be like the wife of someone who was of lesser status because she's not used to that kind of life and doesn't have like those skills and she's like would I even be worthy of being your wife and it was cute so I gave it four out of five stars then I read stay with me by Nicole Fiorna and I gave this one five stars this was for reading Mary's favorite books and this one is so unique and interesting I've never read anything like it our heroine can't feel emotions and so she has been doing so many bad things at home that her parents finally ship her off to this like reform school institute kind of thing in England and so she's there she meets some friends and immediately connects with Ollie and she doesn't feel emotions though so then she starts really like freaking out about feelings that she's having and that's all I want to say about it I loved Ollie's character so much I think I gave this a four and a half stars because there was like a little bit of drama thrown in that I don't think was necessary with a certain character that is a female and that's all I will say there was a drama with a male character that really surprised me but there was drama with a female character near the end that didn't feel as fleshed out because it just felt like it was placed in there for drama and I didn't really appreciate that but I need book two this does end on a cliffhanger even though it's a romance I have to get book two, but I really enjoy this one. Then Desiree from Genki Reader recommended Ends of the Earth by Kira Andrews. My library has a ton of her audiobooks, and I read one... I think this was the first one I read by her. I read two this, I read two of them this month. And this one is Romantic Suspense, and it is with a single dad. So he was trying to just experiment and convince himself that he wasn't gay. He had a one night stand with his best friend and got her pregnant and so she ended up passing away and so he is raising this daughter on his own and he's never really been in a relationship because he's just solely focused on his daughter. His parents pretty much just owned him for having a child out of wedlock and so he is raising her on her own and she's like nine now I want to say so but he's pretty young. He's like 26 and so everybody thinks that they're siblings and not that. I think he's 26 and so everyone thinks they're siblings that take, don't take him seriously and he He's finally saved up enough money for them to go on a trip to like a state park because his daughter's really into nature and they fall he falls in love with a like park ranger and it's so cute but his daughter ends up getting kidnapped or, during the book and they have to go find her and so I really enjoy this one I gave it five out of five stars I really love the romantic suspense aspect I loved their romance and how the single dad was grappling with being selfish and like wanting to have a relationship and putting himself first and not all always putting himself as a father before everything else and realizing that he can have things for himself and I really loved the park ranger because he had to work with his ex who was now married and had a kid with someone else and so he had a lot of emotions about that and there was an age gap because he's in his 30s and the other guy was pretty young in his 20s. It was so good. I recommend checking it out. Then I picked up Games We Play by Dana Isley. I don't know if I'm saying that last name correctly. This is a novella and it was going around TikTok so I picked it up and I gave it four stars. It was fine. I don't think it was like absolutely amazing like everyone's saying it is. Our heroine's a reporter and our hero is this like mysterious online gamer who also has like a really enticing voice I guess and so people will pay him just to say things because they love his voice and he always wears a mask and it's their romance she decides to interview him she signed a non-disclosure and then they spend the night together and like go places do things the one thing I thought was weird was we randomly get one of his friends point of views like three quarters of the way through the book and just for like a chapter and then that was it and I think that's weird I don't like it when the author decides to include a point of view 
just randomly that's not the main couple like I don't care and I don't know if it was to set up his books I think they all get their own books but this one I did enjoy but that threw me for a loop a little bit then I picked up Lisa's favorite romances from Remarkably Lisa so I read No Earls Allowed by Shanna Galen this one our heroine owns an orphanage which well, doesn't own it but she like works there and she's the daughter of a Marquess and so she is titled and her dad wants her back he's like stop spending our money there like you need to come back and so our hero is sent to kind of protect her and make sure everything at the orphanage is okay and then bring her back and and he is a part of the whole series is like a survivors club where they were part of this group of men who took like the hardest of the hard jobs pretty much like they were guaranteed to die but they didn't and so they were really brave and they're all back now and he's the guy that's trying to help her and they fall in love and it was really sweet I really liked how he fell for the kids and at first he was kind of like treating them like soldiers and it was really cute but then they started falling for each other so I give this one four out of five stars I do think it slowed down a little bit in the middle but I thought that the kids in this were really cute and then they she was like pretty much trying to salvage like a rundown broken orphanage and putting her own money into it and I just really enjoyed this so four out of five stars. Then I read Continuum by Danielle Allen and this one I gave three out of five stars. It's a second chance romance and it was pretty short and it took place like all in like two days which I didn't love. So the beginning our hero and our heroine know each other because she tutors him for college and it comes out that he broke up with his girlfriend but then she finally decides to shoot her shot and realizes that he was with his girlfriend. His ex and so she, nothing happens and then we fast forward I think like 10 years and they're reunited and she sees him at a club and they go on a date and then they go on a date the next night and that's pretty much it and there was like no angst there was like nothing keeping them apart they were just spending time together and really liking each other and then they were together and so I don't like books with like zero angst or zero conflict and there was like maybe kind of a little bit of conflict with like someone hitting on him or like someone saying like well we went on a date and she's like okay but that was it and so I wanted more angst in this one and I don't love romances that only take place in the span of like a day or two so I gave this one three out of five stars. Then I read A Duke in Shining Armor by Loretta Chase for that video reading Lisa's favorites and this one I gave two and a half stars more like two stars it was so boring our heroine is, gets drunk on her wedding night and runs away she's supposed to marry a duke and our hero is best friends with that duke and he's also a duke and they're like the disgraceful dukes or something and he chases her and this one again it takes place over a short amount of time and I read another one like that this month that I didn't like. I just, I think that I don't like books that take place in a short amount of time. In my reading vlog, I said like I was 40% in and we were still like a day or two into the book. And I was just like, can more things happen, please? I feel like nothing really happened. And then it was super insta love. So he was like chasing her, trying to bring her back. And then they had to like get clothes and like, I don't know. I was confused and I didn't love this one. Then I read Find Me by Ashley Rostek. This one, our heroine's entire family was murdered by her stalker who was her teacher. And so now she's in the witness protection program kind of thing. I think it's called WITSEC, which is like, it's just she got a new identity and she living in this house by herself. Her uncle was living with her, but then he goes to try to track down her stalker because he's still out there. And she becomes friends with the four brothers next door. And it is a reverse harem. And I really enjoy this. I gave it four to five stars. I do think the romance is really slow burn but I didn't mind that because then it was believable that she started falling for the guys after becoming friends with them and they are all super overprotected of, of her. The twins are her age and I feel like they weren't differentiated enough from each other so that's why I gave it four stars because I wanted more of a personality difference between the twins but I really liked the two older brothers that she had a relationship with as well. They were pretty different and owned a gym and it was a really great romance. She does like push herself physically to the limit with running to try to escape her feelings and her trauma and her guilt over losing her family but I enjoy this one and I'm excited to read book two. Then I listened to the audiobook of How to Forget a Duke by Vivian Lorette and it's an amnesia romance. I listened to this when I read Lisa's Favorites and this one I gave five out of five stars. Our heroine's a matchmaker and she's supposed to find a match for our duke and ends up washing ashore at his estate and it's like a crumbling estate. It's like a pretty much a castle that's falling apart and everybody in his family has married wealthy so they could make fixes to this castle so he needs to marry someone wealthy she's not and she was like going there for some reason and ends up getting in an accident and losing her memory and so she's recuperating there and trying to get her memory back and falling in love with him in the process so it's social class difference amnesia romance 
It was so good. I love this so much. I'm excited to read more from Vivian Lorette, but I just love the A Good Amnesia Romance, so that's why I was obsessed with this book. Then I read Rise to the Sun by Leah Johnson. This one is a YA sapphic romance that takes place at a festival. It only takes place over a weekend, so I didn't love that. Very insta-love, and there was a lot shoved into this book that I don't think was dealt very well. Like, there was at one point where it turned into something about gun violence at, like, large festivals, and I was taken aback by that because I didn't know that was a part of this, and I don't really love reading books about gun violence as a teacher. Um, it's a little too close to home, and so I was surprised when that happened. One of our heroines lost her father in a shooting as well, and then the other one is dealing with something that has to do with revenge porn, so there's a lot of triggers for this book, and the one heroine, though, she is, like, falls madly in love really fast and jumps from relationship to relationship so I really enjoyed reading about a character who dates all the time because I feel like we don't get that a lot so that was nice but she pretty much dumps her best friend and goes off on this like whirlwind weekend with this other girl and her best friend gets mad but I feel like she just like brushed it off and that wasn't really resolved that well and the ending I just I was really enjoying the first half and then the second half just kind of lost me so I gave this one three stars I wanted a lot more and I've been seeing a lot of reviews too that agree with me and I feel really bad because I love Leah Johnson's first book you should see me in a crown was so good but this one just wasn't my favorite then I read reading the signs by Kira Andrews and this is a baseball romance and it is between a pitcher and a catcher it is MM and the the catcher is one of the main heroes he is like perpetual really single. He feels like it's just he's not a relationship guy. He's never gonna find someone that makes him happy and his mom keeps on being like, when are you gonna go settle down and like give me a child? And he's like, mom, it's not gonna happen. And so he's at the end of his career and he's traded and he didn't know he'd be traded. And so he's kind of like thrown for a loop. And so he's traded to Canada and on the Canadian team, like a team in Canada, on that team is his, one of his old best friends, little brothers that he was around all the time. And the little brother had like a huge crush on him and he is not openly gay he hasn't really come to terms with his sexuality yet either and he's never really been with a man and so he but he's always really liked this guy and it's their romance and I love this one I couldn't put it down I feel I think I read it in a whole day like I just kept on listening to it because there was so much baseball in here because they were both baseball players I love sports romances I love the baseball we got I loved how they really got to know each other through baseball and could really calm each other down because the pitcher is really young and he's hot-headed and so the catcher has to try to help him become more level-headed and a better baseball player while also falling in love with each other and it was amazing and so I think there's like a 10-year age gap too and it was really sweet and I loved how his family was a big part of it and like his mom was a big part of it as well the other guys and it was just great five out of five stars then I read Gabriel by Naima Simone this one is a romantic suspense I'm trying to read more and I I was so bored by this book. I gave it three stars. I feel like there wasn't too much suspense in here. There was like a, a murder that happened like 20 years ago and our heroine knew the guy that was murdered and now she's like an agent so she's trying to figure out what happened and the other guy it was also knew that guy that died and it's their romance and it was a six hour audiobook. It was really short. I feel like there wasn't a lot of development in the romance and all of a sudden they really liked each other and I'm like I didn't even know you guys were like talking to each other and so it was just okay and I feel like there wasn't a lot of suspense in this. It's just, it was a very forgettable book, so I gave it three out of five stars. Then I read The Duke's Stolen Bride by Sophie Jordan, and in this one, our heroine, she, her father passed away and pretty much left them destitute, and so she's like, I have to get money, I have to provide for my family. So she decides she's gonna be a courtesan. So she's gonna be an escort, and she has never done that before. And so she decides she needs someone to teach her how to be an escort. And so the Duke is there, and I, I'm blanking on how it happened, but she ends up asking the Duke to show her how to be an escort. And the Duke's like, fine. And he's really attracted to her, and his friends bet him. They're like, there's no way you're gonna be able to leave her completely untouched, because she's like, I'm gonna sell myself, get a lot of money, and support my family. It is my least favorite in this series so far. I wanted to get to know a lot more about the Duke, so I ended up giving it three and a half on Goodreads, but rounding up to four. I feel like his character we really didn't get to learn a lot about, but we knew more about her, and I wanted to feel more connected to him and get a little more background. But Sophie Jordan's romances are always super short. It was like an eight-hour audiobook. I flew through it in a day, and I just really liked how much they fell for each other and how she was trying to hold out so that she could end up 
getting that money, but she was too infatuated with the Duke. And I just really liked how it was definitely a physical relationship and then they slowly fell for each other. It was adorable. And those are the 17 books that I read in the first half of September. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or what you've read this month and what you thought of it. I would love to hear. As always, thank you so much for watching and have a good day. Bye.